Good morning, saints. So wonderful to see you on this beautiful Sabbath day. So glad that we could be together. It's always, you know, we, we kind of, uh, Pastor Annette and I sit up here in the chancel, and it's 10 till 10, and we're just praying, oh, Lord, please let some people come. And then God is faithful. He brings you to worship, and we're just so thankful to be able to see you. We're just, again, we're just really thrilled that you're here, and, and we trust that the Holy Spirit's going to bless this time together. I want to remind you of our worship service that will happen at 4 o'clock this afternoon. That's the newly entitled Journey. We invite you to be a part of that. That's a wonderful time together. It's a, a comfortable time. It's a casual time. You can bring your lawn chair, or you can certainly make use of the benches that are there, and, and just join into worship. We, we have wonderful singing. Uh, today we'll be having a testimony, so that will be a lot of fun, uh, as well as, as, well as a, a devotion brought by Pastor Annette. So we just want to encourage you to come and be a part of, of that opportunity. Also want to remind you of uh, Ash Wednesday. I, I can't believe that it's Lent already, but here it is, just this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock right here in the, in the sanctuary. We will live stream that service, but of course it's a little difficult to do the imposition of ashes <laughs> over a live stream. So we really, really want to encourage as many of you as possible to come and be a part of this entryway into Lent. We also want to let you know about a congregational event that will be happening March 20th. It's a wonderful time together. It's going to be a, a congregational picnic out on the lawn. So bring your blanket, bring a chair. There's going to be games that will be played. There'll be food that will be enjoyed. Most importantly, there will be wonderful fellowship as well. So we invite you to come and be a part of that on March 20th. Also, I want to let you know that uh, for the last time, I know I said this back in 19 and 20, but for the last time, I'll be, I'll be leading a pilgrimage group to Israel at the end of October, beginning of November in 22. We're going to have a kind of a, uh, an introductory meeting to that opportunity next Sunday here after worship over in Guard Hall. We'll go over the, over the itinerary of, about the wonderful blessings um, that will be as a part of that thing. I really believe that that's a life-changing experience. Uh, and we'll also talk about the particular COVID protocols that we have to follow as we fly to and then enjoy our time in Israel. My friend who's been for 25 years now and who's our guide, he's actually been able to run three groups through uh, just starting just last month. So he's thrilled to have pilgrimage groups back. Uh, and, has, and has so far had no one... Uh, that had to stay behind while the group left because of a COVID quarantine. So as long as we follow the rules, it's, it seems like we'll be okay with that. So again, the orientation meeting around that, the introductory meeting for that, will be next Sunday after worship uh, uh, over there in Guard Hall. Now I want to invite you to please rise and join with me in our call to worship. Welcome. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whether we come with joy or sorrow, in this place we are community bound together because of what Jesus did for us at the cross. All are welcomed in this place. I invite you to be seated and please join with me in prayer. Gathering God, you have promised that if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. In this time, prepare our hearts and minds that we might receive your wisdom and understanding. Relieve our bodies and our souls from all the desires and cravings shaped by this world that we might be filled with your peace. Pour out your spirit upon us, that our worship might be joyful and authentic, bearing good fruit in our lives with our neighbors. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. If you are able, please rise and sing praise to God.
And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then seated. We worship a God who is wise and just, and we know that we have fallen short of God's glory. Yet our wise and just God is also gracious and merciful. God hears our prayers. In humility and trust, let us bring our prayers of confession to God, admitting those ways we have fallen short let us pray. Gracious and loving spirit, who moves freely and gracefully through this world, transforming and mending the broken pieces, we confess that we stumble through life trying to survive on our own power. We feel paralyzed, numbed by fear, by old habits, by the effort we expend in trying to impress others. We try to earn your grace through our own awkward endeavors, forgetting that all that we are comes from you. In your mercy, forgive us. Fill us with your liberating spirit that our souls might run, leap, and praise you so that all the world would know your grace and truth. We pray for mercy and grace 
as we confess those times we have disappointed you and ourselves. Amen. Friends, our Lord Jesus suffered death on the cross. In that act, the God of grace and glory said no. No to the powers of death. No to the sin that tries to hold us captive. And Christ said yes to God's promises throughout the ages. Yes to new life. Yes to hope and transformation. The Spirit of God anoints us with that hope and power. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. I invite you to please rise and sing together our praise of thanksgiving for God's grace and mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall. And now, as God's forgiven people, know that as we pass the joy and peace to one another, we pass that through Christ. So let us now greet each other with the word of God through the peace of Christ. Either you do it right here in the sanctuary or at home, or maybe even through comments on Facebook. May the joy and peace of Christ be with you, Lonnie.
on TV with me. As we return to our seats, we'll continue. It is joyful to see one another again, isn't it? And well, let's continue this the, because you do have the peace of Christ. So let's continue to greet one another today after the worship service outside and after the congregational meeting outside on the patio as well. But now we are going to have the children's message. And CM is not here today, so I will introduce Becky to come forward and do the children's message. <laughs> Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. And a quick shout out to a family we have missed, the Stamey family. It is so good to have Layton, Lawrence, and Lincoln, the boys, and Rob and Brittany, we love you very much. You're always in our hearts. I want to build something today. I have always wanted a beach house, and I want it right on the sand. None of this, you know, just real hard work stuff. But there's a song I learned, and if you know it, join me. It's that song that I learned when I was really little called The Wise Man Built His House Upon the Rock. Who knows it? Raise your hand. Come on. Oh, okay. This is going to be nervy. <laughs> I see. Bing is always trying to get me to sing. <laughs> All right. So the song goes, and it's really good, and you might know it. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. I cannot hear you. The rains came down, and the floods came up. The rains came down, and the floods came up. Good. The rains came down, and the floods came up, and the house on the rock stood fast or still. Then there's Becky, comes along with her beach house. The foolish girl, <laughs> the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down, especially Malibu. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up and the house on the sand, this is great kids, went smash. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, that's a fun song, but it, it it's actually ties in to Pastor Jim's sermon, right? Your sermon. <laughs> it, his sermon today on what we build our foundation on. And so I thought, well, if I want to build my foundation, there's some people in here. George has been on Buildings and Ground. But I got to ask, Craig Baker has been on buildings and ground. Why do I have to build a strong house, Craig, to what? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Craig, this is my hammer. Am I okay with this? Okay, let's thank Craig Baker. He reluctantly wanted it. 
and Sam Johnson's on building the ground, George's, so we just have that Ellen too. But we do need this, and I think what we learn is that in building a foundation, it is a story on our foundation on Christ, in Jesus. So if we have that foundation on like rock, Peter the rock, when the storm or the rain represents just tough times, just things when life gets hard. And has life been hard, you guys? It's hard to move. It's hard to make new friends, kids, in school. But Jesus will always be with you. So let's go ahead and sing our prayer song. Where is she? There she is. Help me out. Ready? God is always near me. God will always hear me when I let's hold our hand pray dear God you are the rock you are foundation whenever we go through a hard time we know that you are with us you love us and we don't go alone without you thank you Lord Jesus in Jesus name amen all right, the wonderful children. We got a whole gaggle here today. And those of you online, we love you and I hope you're doing well. Miss Nancy and I believe Miss Ellen will lead you to Sunday school. Take care. Thank you, Miss Becky. As we say goodbye to the children going off to the Sunday school. The first lesson for today is from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. So hear these words of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know if you noticed the panicked look on my face during the announcements or my scrambling over here to the side. The entire service is loaded onto this computer over here. And so all the things that we say, all the things that we sing, all the order, everything is right here. And that projects that on these screens that are in front of us that you can't see. When that crashes, Oh, my. 
thanks be to God it's working again. If, if you see me just kind of smoothly slide, slide behind the pulpit, that lets you know that it has yet crashed again. Pray that doesn't happen. We're going to look today at our second uh, scripture passage from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Please feel free to read along with me in the order of worship. Those of you that are at home, open up your Bibles. Those of you out on the lawn, also read along with me. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Hear now God's word for us. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his home on rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell. And great was its fall. Here ends our scripture readings for today. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Oh Lord God, we are so thankful that your presence here with us does not depend upon our technological ability. We're so thankful, Lord God, for your faithfulness and for the work of your Holy Spirit. And so we would ask that same Holy Spirit to now to speak to us, to press these words upon our hearts so that each of us might hear a particular message that we need to hear so that we, we would be better equipped to be the saints that you need out in the world. Lord God, bless this time together. Bless this reading of the word. In your son's name we pray. Amen. You know, as I tell those wonderfully faithful folks who attend the Tuesday morning Bible study, when you read scripture, it is vitally important to understand the context in which the passage that you are reading is placed. Context often shapes our understanding of a text. Context gives depth and texture to a passage. Context is ignored often to our own peril. How many times do we hear politicians and others often in public eye and ear complain that their words were taken out of context? Some of the worst practices of the church were ordained because those needing credibility for their actions or policies cherry-picked or, or lifted out of Scripture a particular text showing no concern for the shaping context out of which it was pl placed. And so the church defense of slavery in this country and apartheid in other countries centuries past are sad examples of the consequences of dismissing the context in which a text is placed. Context is important. And today's second reading is a wonderful example of the value of understanding context. Jesus declares that anyone who hears the, his words and does them is a man or a woman building their lives on a sure foundation. And then he follows with this with this wonderful depiction of the house built on the rock and, the, and then in contrast, the house built upon shifting sands. When hard times come, and friends, they, they inevitably do, don't they? When those hard times come, only one house will remain standing. And that's the house built on a firm foundation. And of course, the foundation, the one strong enough to withstand the storms of this lifetime, is the one based on, listened to, committed to, in the words that Jesus has just spoken. That's what he said. But that begs a question, doesn't it? 
What words? What words has Jesus spoken that moved his listeners to astonishment and recognition of his authority? What words? Our text for today comes at the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. It is in these words, the words of the Sermon on the Mount, that are the, the building blocks of a believer's sure foundation for life. It is in these words, not contradicting Old Testament law, but interpreting that same law, it's in those words that lives are shaped, lives are transformed for those who read, for those who hear, and for those who obey. You know, in Jesus' time, but I fear also in ours, faith had become in many ways a, a kind of a mindless obedience to the law. It was ritual. It was routine. It was faith done in a particular way over and over and over again. And it was burdensome. In many ways, it was oppressive. But Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, tells us that God cares just as much about our hearts as he does our actions. I used to tell young folks all the time when I was a youth pastor, that in the midst of a broken world, in the midst of actions starting off with the best of intentions, but often finishing in a far different way than we had intended, I used to tell our young folks that God honors the heart as much as he honors the head. One commentary tells us that as, that as Jesus stands on this mountainside just outside of Capernaum, that Jesus stands at the height of his popularity. Jesus stands in power. Jesus stands as a miracle worker. Many of the folks that are sitting there are believing that Jesus is, in fact, the Messiah, the one that they've been waiting for. Even if they didn't really understand what, what kind of, of a Messiah Jesus would be. Jesus stands and teaches with authority. And what does he say? How does Jesus bring Old Testament law into a New Testament understanding? What does Jesus say that the crowds find so astonishing? Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in spirit. Blessed are the peacemakers. Love your enemies. And when your oppressors ask for your tunic, let them have your cloak as well. Beware of practicing your faith in a, in a self-glorifying way. Be careful not to judge others. Because as soon as you justify the practice of judgment, you will condemn yourself. Judge a prophet, a leader, Less by what they say than by the fruits of their actions. I have a dear friend in Charlotte who says, you can trust 50% of what a person says, but 100% of what a person does. Jesus spoke in power. Power such that his listeners recognized the special level of authority contained in his teachings. The Sermon on the Mount is the teachings of Jesus at their highest level. Today, even, even secular philosophers honor the brilliance of its teachings. But these words do more than just give us wonderful ethnic, gui or ethnic guidelines. These words tell us who Jesus is. And they bind us to himself as our master rabbi, as our teacher. These words suggest to us another way of living, of a different set of goals to achieve. Many of us build our ultimate hope 
upon worldly prosperity, riches, or acclaim. Many of us assign ultimate importance to some, some level of personal achievement. Many of us have turned the, the living, vibrant faith into a religious collection of rites and rituals in the mistaken belief that if we do them, if we religiously perform, we will have eternal life. But in these words of the Sermon on the Mount, and I would say also in the words voiced by the prophet Micah, we discover the heart of God, of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit. You've heard me mention The Chosen, the television series, several times as we've invited folks to come and watch it here together. Now, season two is over, and, we, and we're going to have a long wait until we're able to gather once again to watch season three. They, they just start filming in a few months. Not everything in The Chosen is right out of Scripture. There is, there is some artistic license. But I do believe that everything expressed does reflect the spirit, dare I say, the, the full context of the gospel. But I was so incredibly touched and moved by one thing that was contained in the last episode. As Jesus is with Matthew, preparing his words that will collectively become the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells Matthew that the Sermon on the Mount is a map. And in the future, Jesus says, in the future, if anyone wants to find me, they will find me in the groups doing these things. That's why these words are so important. That's why, they, why they're described by Jesus himself as a foundation that cannot be destroyed. Rather than placing our ultimate hope in the, in the shifting sands of our own construction, we instead are to hear and obey and to live into life as God had intended it for us. Friends, we live in scary times, don't we? Wars and, and rumors of wars, the events in the Ukraine. The pandemic, life dictated by, by the needs of science and the politics of those who want to be in control seemingly of every aspect of our lives. Schools that seem so unsatisfying. Our checkbooks getting eaten alive by rampant inflation. Jobs that, that promise the moon. Relationships that seem so fragile. The sands of life seem to be shifting around our feet in frightening ways and at a more even more frightening speed. There are times when it seems like we are only one step away from all of it crashing down around us. But friends, there is a foundation that can withstand anything that life might throw against it. There is a, a foundation of ultimate strength. Strength not because of us, but instead because of the God who built it. There is a foundation that transcends our weak human efforts. The foundation is Jesus, who calls us into a relationship with him. This foundation is in his words and teaching, not ours. This foundation is in his work, not ours. In his grace, not ours our merit this is where we stand this is the sure foundation jesus and his teachings for us 
Amen. We are a people rooted in the grace and mercy, mercy of Jesus Christ. We are a people rooted in the covenant care of the God who created us. So it's in response to that God, to our God, that Jesus, and moved by the Holy Spirit, that we bring our offerings and our praise of thanksgiving. And we invite you to leave those offerings in the baskets by the door as you leave today. And now I invite you to pray with me. Oh, Lord God, we are indeed standing on the rock of Christ, just seeing the sinking sand all the way around us in the world right now as we see the wars and, and all the sadness of the killings of innocent people around us. It touches our hearts, Lord, that we truly have no one to trust but you and only you. So we now pray that you stir up within us, Lord, and that is between you, Lord Jesus, and each person's heart that whatever they feel to give to you and to your church, that it's your church, Lord, that is going to bring peace to this world. Nothing else will last but you and your church. So we give what we have, and may you multiply that, Lord, just like you did on the Sermon on the Mount. As the fish and the loaves was fed to all, to all the people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So
was really beautiful. I recognize some of the voices in that song over there. Uh, I think we needed to hear that right now, that our church is built upon a rock. We needed that more than ever as we face the turmoil in our world. So would you please join me in prayer? God of hope and peace, we are deeply grateful for your real spiritual presence now here with us, never leaving or forsaking us. We come before you with our hearts broken as we turn our eyes towards the people of the Ukraine, now having been invaded by the Russian aggression of evil. It is hard for us to see the Ukrainian people suffer so much. The first and best thing that we can do is to fall to our knees in prayer to you. So we pray and ask that you hear our prayers, even those being unsaid in our hearts. We thank you that in every situation, every dark moment like this, that you are active and working among us. Even when things seem at their bleakest, we trust in your sovereignty and strength. Lord, we are so aware that in this world we will face trouble, but yet you have said that we need to take heart because you have already overcome this world. We embrace the fact that this world and the troubles we face in it, they have been overcome. And we rest in the knowledge that you have the power to move in every and any situation. So, as we watch a war unfold in the Ukraine, we ask for your grace and peace to rule in the hearts and the minds of all involved. We ask for your spirit of peace to rain down upon them, to intervene and bring them peace. Bring an end to this war and all wars. Help them sense your everlasting peace that is a greater peace, all greater than anyone can ever imagine. We pray that you would work in the hearts of our nation's leaders in DC, all world leaders and diplomats and lead them toward peace. We pray for them that they seek your wisdom and discernment as they work through diplomacy to prepare for whatever is ahead of the path that we now are faced. Move their hearts towards your peace to help and protect all the innocent lives now being killed in the Ukraine. Please, Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, pour out your spirit of compassion upon us here at LNPC. Be with those who are hospitalized. Provide them with a full recovery. And be with those who are on hospice care. Give them peace of heart, mind, and soul, and give strength and encouragement to their families. Be with those who are suffering in silence those who are haunted by bad memories or who bear scars of pain from long ago. Give peace to those who grieve and comfort those suffering from pain. Lord, heal all who are sick and thank you for healing us all and for hearing our prayers through Christ who taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. stand
seated. I just want to remind you that after the charge and the benediction, we will sing the prayer for the road, and then you will stay in your seat because the congregational meeting will start just a few minutes after that. If you're a friend of the congregation, if you're a person visiting here, we're just thrilled that you're here with us. If you want to stay through the congregational meeting, you're certainly welcome to do so. Those of you that are sitting out there in the lawn, I know it's wonderful out there, but if you want to vote, I see you waving. If you want to vote, we encourage you to come on along inside as well. Friends, we do live in scary times. The winds are blowing, the storms seem great. And yet, we are in a house, we are in a home, we are in a family that can withstand anything that the world might throw at us because of who is in us. Our hope is not in ourselves. Our hope is not in our strength. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, who is the sure foundation. Now may the God of all hope open your eyes. May the God of all peace still your anxious mind. May the God of all love fill your heart to fullness beyond measure. Go now in the hope and the peace and the love of God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you this day and every day. Amen. congregational meeting will begin in just a few moments. Our ushers are going to be passing out the annual reports for you now.